Okay, hello everyone, and thanks for joining the River Room. We are going to start with the first session. We are with Jakub Schultz, and session will be about upgrade yourself to the business class. So, hand over to you, Jakub. Thanks, Paolo, and uh, welcome everyone to my talk. Uh, my name is uh, Jakub Scholz, I work at Red Hat, and if you are already using Strumzy, then uh, you might already know my name from all kinds of different releases and uh, so on. Uh, and today I will be talking about upgrades. Now, if you have ever flown in a plane, on, especially on some long distance flight, you probably get the idea about the difference between the business class and the economic class, right? Business class, that's the fancy one where you get big seats with a lot of space, you get better food, better service, you get uh, more booze to get yourself drunk during the flight, uh, you have better screen to watch some movies, uh, and so on and so on. Whereas uh, in the economy class, it's not so great. Uh, you got a lot less space, uh, it's a lot more crowded and noisy, the service isn't so great. The food is kind of yeah, not that great either, and so on. So it's quite easy to say that your life is much better in the business class than in the economic class. But of course, even in the economic class, uh, yeah, it's you will still survive the flight and you will still get out of the plane on the on the other end. So it's not all that bad, but it's definitely not perfect. And it's similar with software. If you run some old version of some software, then yeah, you will probably survive it, but your life might not be that great. There will be bugs, there will be security issues, there will be features which are missing in the old version. Whereas if you would be running the latest, greatest version of some software, then uh, the bugs were fixed, the security issues were addressed, new features are appearing with every release, and so on. So your life will be probably better. And what's similar between those two things is that all what stands between the bad life and the better life is an upgrade. When you are flying a plane, you can usually go and uh, buy an upgrade for your plane ticket from the economy class to the business class. And when you are running some software, you can upgrade your software to a new version and uh, yeah, get the latest, greatest stuff. The upgrade is of course not for free, but in this talk, I will try to convince you that it's definitely worth it, at least when it comes to the software and to Strimsy. In the first part, I will talk a bit more about the issues you will face when using the old software. And uh, then in the second part, I will try to show you that upgrading and staying up to date is actually not that hard. Really, one of the motivations for this talk are questions which we sometimes get on the different Strumzy channels, which sometimes sound something like this. Need urgent help? I use Strumzy 26 to run our critical infrastructure, and it started failing yesterday. Can anyone help me, please? Now, when I look at it, I see several things. First of all, Strumzy 26 is very old. I don't actually remember the release date out of my head, so I had to look it up, but it was released in October 2021, many years ago. And if you check the container image, then you can see that it has uh, many different uh, security issues in them, 12 critical CVEs, 63 high-level CVEs, and so on. So it's probably not so secure either. So if someone is really using this to run some critical infrastructure, it might be a bit scary. Uh, so this kind of demonstrates some of the issues uh, which you might face when running an old software. And uh, security issues are definitely one of them. Unfortunately, I can't promise you that if you will be using the latest streams release, it will be always CVE free because uh, it happens quite often that just in the time between uh, the release candidate and then running the pipelines to run the tests and so on, and the GA release of a, of a new Strumzy release, 
which usually takes like three to four days, it even then happens that some new CVs uh, show up in the meantime. So it's quite hard to have even the brand new release CVE free, but I can guarantee you that if you are running old version of Streamzy or basically any other software, there will be way more CVEs than in the new versions. Of course, not every CV is uh, exploitable. Just because some CV is in a container image, it doesn't necessarily mean someone from the other end of the world can hack your Kafka cluster. But at the same time, it's very hard to say for some CV that on 100% this cannot be exploited and this doesn't affect your installation. So yeah, one definitely needs to be careful. And it's a bit scary when we still from time to time have users asking for help on Slack or on GitHub who are running the Strumzy versions affected by the serious CVs such as Lock for Shell, which uh, yeah, basically are remote code execution uh, vulnerabilities and are very dangerous. Uh, there are different kinds of CVs. Some of them are easier to fix than some others. Sometimes all you need to do to address them is to just rebuild the project so you can, uh, for example, fix them easily yourself. But others might be much harder if there is something in Kafka or one of its dependencies. We basically have to wait for the Apache Kafka project to do a new release and so on. But what do all these CVs have in common is that uh, Whenever you fix something, you have to do quite a lot of testing and you have to repeat the whole release process. You cannot really just uh, replace one jar and expect that everything works because uh, if you are working on some software project long enough, you know that uh, there are some very unexpected things which can happen. So CVEs are definitely one of the issues uh, you will face if you run old Streamzy versions. Another problem are bugs. Uh, I guess that's not really surprising. Uh, bugs will always happen wherever you do software development. Uh, you will never be able to do a 100% bug-free project or release. And if there is something serious, we try to backport the, the bug fixes, for example, into the last release. But we will definitely not backport it into some releases which are old for several months or even years. Uh, A, because we don't have enough resources for that, but also because it's not always easy because you quite often cannot simply copy paste the same bug fix into some release, which is one year old because there were some new features implemented, some refactorings happened, and uh, the bug fix would basically need to be implemented and tested from scratch. So bugs will be another thing which you will face with all Streamzy releases. Now, I guess the bugs and the CVs, they are kind of obvious to everyone, but there are some things which might be a bit less obvious. And one of them is the impact on how the Streamzy versions and the Kubernetes versions relate. Kubernetes does roughly three releases per year, and I think uh, right now it supports each release for roughly one year. And each release will bring some new APIs, uh, new features, but also from time to time, some of the old APIs are being removed. Uh, and in Streamzy, we define the oldest supported version, but to be honest, the newest supported version is not always that clear. So for example, if you would be running Streamzy 039, which is not that old as a release, does it work on Kubernetes 1.30 or not? Well, to be honest, I don't know for sure. We don't have any issues reported by the users. I'm not aware of any issues myself. I'm not aware of any reasons why it should not work, but honestly, when we released Streamzy 039, Kubernetes 1.30 did not exist yet. So yeah, it likely works there fine, but we didn't test it when releasing this Streamzy release because it didn't simply exist. Yet. So that's why it's quite important to be in touch with the teams managing your Kubernetes clusters and kind of stay in sync and make sure that the Kubernetes clusters are upgraded in time, but also make sure that the Streamzy versions you are running are working fine on the Kubernetes versions you are running and you might upgrade to. And to help with it, the uh, supported versions of Kubernetes can be always found on our website on the, in the download section. 
And this is really important because if you don't do it, then, uh, for example, in the past with Kubernetes 1.25, we saw some users who were running some very old Streamsy versions. And when their Kubernetes team updated their Kube cluster to 1.25, which removed the old pod disruption budget API, then suddenly their old Streamsy operators stopped working. Nobody noticed it. A few months later, the certificates expired and they basically broke down the whole Kafka cluster. So if you don't do this carefully, you can easily run into issues. Uh, another thing which is not that obvious, but is really important uh, in my opinion, is uh, about getting help. Do you remember what you were doing one year ago, two years ago, three years ago? To be honest, I don't remember it exactly, and I guess nobody does. You might have some rough idea, but not really all the details. So if you ask for some help about some Streamsy version released one year ago, two years ago, you can't really expect the maintainers and contributors to Streamsy to kind of be able to, to help you or answer some questions out of their head because they will simply not remember it anymore. And uh, to be honest, they might not have the time to dig through the old release notes, documentation, and the old source code to figure out what the issue might be, what uh, features were supported, which bugs were reported in this version, and so on. So if you are using old version and need some help, you might be left on your own because nobody else will remember and nobody else will have time to dig into the details of some old version. So that's something to be very aware of as well. So hopefully I scared you enough so that you want to run and upgrade your Streamsy right now. Uh, and that takes me to the second part of my talk where I focus more on uh, how complicated the upgrades are, how, uh, how easy they are, how expensive they are. Uh, and in general, Streamsy has two ways how you can do upgrades. The first one is what I would call step-by-step -step upgrades. It basically means that you will go and install almost every Streamsy version, and it kind of follows this idea that you upgrade often and you stay always up to date. Uh, this method also allows you to kind of separate the upgrade of the operator itself from the upgrade of the Apache Kafka cluster, which uh, helps you to kind of split the concerns by doing them separately. And uh, in a way, the step by step upgrades, they kind of mean that you do the upgrades maybe a bit more often, but you do them in a much smaller steps. And the smaller steps, they have a lot less risk and they are a lot less disruptive. So they might be easier at the end when you sum up all the efforts and all the issues you faced. So how does it look like when you do a step-by-step -step upgrade? Uh, let's imagine that we start with Streams 39 with uh, Kafka 3.6.1 and you are running that somewhere in production and everything works fine. And then uh, in Streamsy, we release Streamsy 040. So the first thing you will do is you will go and you will upgrade the Streamsy operator to the 040 version. Now, what will happen is with every operator upgrade, the operator has to roll all of your containers, all of your operands, and make sure that they are using the newer images. That has two main reasons. First, it actually needs to pull the new images with all the CVE fixes, which I talked about uh, earlier. But it also, the operator needs to know what kind of image is running in the operand. It needs to know that it has the APIs it expects, that the readiness uh, and liveness probes work as it expects, and so on. So that's why it needs to update the containers and basically roll them to use the new image. But it doesn't necessarily update the Kafka version. So after you install the Streamsy operator and after it rolls everything, you run the new operator version, but you actually still run the same Kafka version as before, 3.6.1. So there was no change to the actual Kafka version. And only in the next step, you can actually upgrade the Kafka to 3.7 because the Streamsy 04 release brings uh, as a new feature support for Kafka 3.7. And uh, Again, you trigger this upgrade by editing the custom resource uh, and the operator will roll the Kafka cluster. It will upgrade the images. And uh, as a result, you will be running with 
Streams is your 40 operator, but now with Kafka 3.7. But normally in the first step, you keep the interbroker protocol version still at 3.6 version. And only then when you see that all your clients are still working with Kafka 3.7, you will actually go, and I'm pressing the wrong button, uh, you will actually go and update the interbroker protocol version. Uh, and uh, that does another rolling update of the Kafka clusters if you are running Zookeeper based uh, Kafka cluster. Uh, and as a result, you will be running Streams 040 with Kafka 3.7 and Interbroker protocol version 3.7. And then two months later, Streams release Streams 041. So you basically repeat the whole cycle and you install Streams 041. It again rolls everything. But this time, for example, there's no new Kafka version, so you don't need to do the Kafka version part. So that was kind of the schema of the upgrade. Uh, let's look at the demo. How does it look in a real life? And I will be actually using recording here uh, and not the live demo. It's not because I would not trust uh, Streamzy to do the demo live, but it's because the recording allows me to speed up through the different rolling updates uh, and we don't have to wait for them and we can actually fit the demo into the, into the talk. What you can see here is that I have already my Kafka cluster deployed with Zookeepers, Kafka's entity operator. And I also deployed some example clients. And when I check the Kafka custom resource, uh, which I use to deploy the Kafka cluster, you can see that I specify there that I want Kafka 3.6.1 and I want to use the interbroker protocol version 3.6. And when I get the actual Kafka resource from the Kubernetes cluster, which has the status section, you can see that the operator confirmed there that it's indeed running uh, Kafka 3.6.1 for me. And you can also see that the operator version I'm using right now is 0.39. So it's exactly as it was on the, on the previous slide in the diagram. And I can also check that my uh, consumer and producer are working. They are just simple example applications sending some hello world messages. So nothing complicated, but yeah, everything seems to work fine. And I can start with the upgrade. So I already prepared there the installation files for Streams 040. Uh, this is exactly as you would download them from the Streams GitHub, for example. And I will just do kubectl apply on that and that will install the operator. And if you look at the upper part of the screen, you can see that it installed the new operator and now it's doing the initial rolling update of the whole cluster. It rolled the zookeepers. Now it's rolling the Kafka. Now it rolls the entity operator and then uh, it's finished. And I can again check the Kafka custom resource. And what you can see now is, as I promised, the Kafka version did not change. But now the operator version managing it is Streams 040. So we kind of did the first step. And now I obviously want to make sure that all my clients are not somehow broken, disturbed. So I'm gonna go and check again that my consumers and producers are still working and they are still saying hello world to each other. So that looks good. So uh, that's the first part. But now I'm still running the old Kafka version. So I want to upgrade the Kafka version to 3.7 now. So to do that, I have to simply edit the Kafka custom resource. I have to find there the version field. And all I have to do is to simply change it from 3.6.1 to 3.7.1 and uh, save the changes. And again, in the upper window, that's again speed up. In reality, it would take like a few minutes. Uh, it rolls the whole cluster and does the upgrade of the Kafka cluster to Kafka 3.7. Again, I want to check that everything worked fine so I can see, okay, Kafka is now 3.7. Operator didn't change. Uh, consumers, producers still working. Hooray. Uh, it's always a good sign. And... Uh, yeah, so it seems that the upgrade of the software to Kafka 3.7 worked fine, but I am still using the uh, the old interbroker protocol version. So I have to update that as well. And you can do that again by editing it in the in the Kafka custom resource. 
Now, if you don't know what the inter-broker protocol version does, it basically tells the Kafka brokers what version of the Kafka protocol they should use when talking with each other. But Kafka is also using it to kind of gate some new features and uh, new parts of the protocol to be enabled only when you change the protocol version. Now, in Zookeeper-based clusters, it's this inter-broker protocol version. But if you would be using craft-based cluster, there will be another field in the Kafka CR, which will be called craft metadata version. And that's something what craft is using instead of the inter-broker protocol version. And one big difference is that with changing the craft metadata version, you actually do not need the rolling update of the Kafka brokers. But with Zookeeper-based cluster and with the inter-broker protocol version, we have to roll the Kafka cluster as you have seen uh, right now in the upper part of the window. So now we have Kafka 3.7, including the new protocol version. And now we are going to move on and install Stream 041. So I will do again kubectl apply. And uh, yeah, I guess you know the drill by now. It will install the new operator. The new operator will roll all the pods to change the, uh, change the container images and pull the new CVEs and the new APIs of the Kafka agent and so on. And as a result, we are now at Kafka 3.7. We are using Streams 041. And uh, hopefully, the consumer is still working. Yes, it still works. So uh, everything went fine. Uh, of course, that's absolutely not surprising for me that everything worked fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, as I said, because there's no new Kafka version in Streams 041, there's no Kafka 3.7.1 or 3.8.0 or anything like that. That's basically it for the upgrade. Uh, and now I think upgrading step by step works great. And uh, especially if you do it as we are releasing the versions. But, you know, I also kind of know the reality. Uh, I worked for a long time in the financial industry. I know that it's not easy to roll out some new versions of some software to production every uh, two months, especially in some uh, more rigid industries. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't work for everyone. Sometimes you are also maybe already behind and running some old Streamsy version and don't want to now go one version by another step by step and spend the next two days doing that. And that's why in Streamsy you can also upgrade by skipping some versions. And this is something where we allow you to skip both multiple Streamsy versions, but also multiple Kafka versions. And it means that you get to upgrade less often, maybe every six months, maybe every year. Uh, but it also means that you have to always do the operator and the Kafka upgrade at the same time. And uh, you kind of do maybe the upgrade less often, but it's not anymore these small steps with very little risk. It's now one huge jump somewhere into what's a little bit unknown. So it means it's way more disruption. It's way more risky that something goes wrong. And if you do this kind of upgrade, it's also super important to read the docs and the release notes because, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's not something we really are able to test for every single Streamsy and Kafka version. And there are also some uh, things such as feature gate changes and so on. So it's not like you can do one upgrade from Streamsy. 011 to Streams 041, uh, but you should be able to do it, for example, from some 30 something versions. But always check the docs and release notes because that's where we would put any warnings about uh, versions which don't support upgrade anymore. So, how does it work when you try to upgrade by skipping versions? So, imagine that you are running Streams 036, that's uh, quite old now. Uh, and you are running Kafka 3.4. And what you can do is you can simply install Streams 041 in just one big jump over five Streams releases. And what will happen is there will be one big upgrade from Streams 036 and Kafka 3.4 to Streams 041 and Kafka 3.7. It has a big long arrow here because it's the big jump. 
but at the end you will then go directly to Streamz 041 and Kafka 3.7 so no more small steps no more uh, no more uh, less risky things but one big jump so again let's have a look at uh, how it would look like in uh, in the real code uh, so I again already installed the cluster, same as before. I used Zookeeper based cluster for this with Zookeeper pods, Kafka pods. I have the consumers and producers uh, installed. And I can once again check the Kafka custom resource. And you can see here that it's using the Kafka 3.4.0 uh, version and the old interbroker protocol version. And actually, if I would check the resource from Kubernetes, then uh, the status section would not show the versions because Trims 036 is too old uh, and it doesn't have this uh, feature. So that's the example where using old versions means you don't have some new features. But I still have the consumers, so I can check the consumer. The consumer is working. And uh, so I'm ready for the, for the upgrade. And I, again, prepare the installation files uh, for Trims 0. 41 and uh, all I have to do for that is kubectl apply and in the upper pane you should see how the new version of the operator is uh, rolling out the new pod started the old uh, version shut down and now <laughs> Remember, when I showed you the custom resource I used to deploy the Kafka cluster, I had there this version 3.4 specified. And uh, now I'm going to check it again, the custom resource. I need to wait a few seconds for the operator to actually do the first reconciliation. But now I see what happened here. Now the new operator started. It saw the Kafka cluster, but it saw that it's running some old Kafka version 3.4. And I actually request this in the custom resource. And that means that the operator cannot operate it because Trims 041 doesn't support such old Kafka version. So I have to go to the custom resource and I have to change it to 3.7 to tell the operator, okay, please do the upgrade for me. Or actually, if you want, you can simply not specify the versions, neither the regular version nor the interbroker protocol version in the, in the custom resource. And then when you do the operator upgrade, the operator would automatically proceed with the Kafka upgrade as well. So now we change the version or we removed it and we can see in the upper pane how it's uh, rolling everything and upgrading uh, everything. Uh, and resource again, you can see now I'm running the new Kafka version. So it's 3.7 now and it's Trims 0.41. We have still the warnings here about interbroker protocol version because that's now changed. If you notice in the in the upper part of the window, there is still a rolling update uh, going on. So that's changing the interbroker protocol version. And when I check the log from my consumer, I actually had a bad timing. I just found it when it was uh, restarting the coordinator. So it took it a second to find a new coordinator and now it's consuming the messages again. So yeah, we jumped what five Streamzy versions and three Kafka versions in uh, one big step, and uh, we landed on both feet, and we have a running cluster with uh, with latest and greatest Streamzy and Apache Kafka. So that's kind of the other option for doing the upgrades, which might be less often, but yeah, a bit more disruptive. So talking about upgrades would be weird if I would not mention downgrades. Uh, so in Strimzy, we support downgrades as well, but kind of the only way how you can downgrade is always step by step. You don't have to jump through every single Strimzy version, but you have to basically jump through the supported Kafka versions. And uh, as usually, you should check the release notes uh, and the docs because there might be something such as you have to disable some feature gates before doing the downgrade and so on. Uh, and one really important thing, if you are already using Craft or Zookeeper as Apache Kafka, uh, as a part of the upgrade, you should at the end upgrade the Craft metadata version 
to the new version, but actually downgrade of the metadata version is not supported right now. It's a bit silly because you should upgrade it as part of the upgrade, but you cannot downgrade it anymore, but that's what it is. So you have to deal with it and uh, yeah, take some risk at the end. So the, the issue with the downgrade is that if you, for example, start with Streams 041 and Kafka 3.7, and then try to downgrade to Streams 35, then the Streams 35 operator has absolutely no idea about Kafka 3.7. Kafka 3.7 did not exist when 035 Streams was released, so it has no knowledge of how to downgrade it. So that's why it will give you an error. And instead, you have to kind of go step by step. So from Streams 041 and Kafka 3.7, you have to first go and downgrade to Kafka 3.6. So you will then be for some time running Streams 041 and Kafka 3.6. And then you can kind of take another step and you can downgrade to Streams 038 because Streams 038 that already supports Kafka 3.6. So you can downgrade the operator, but keep the same Kafka version and you will be running Streams 038 with Kafka 3.6. And then, for example, again, you can downgrade Kafka to 3.5. And once you are running Kafka 3.5, you can downgrade Streamsy from 0.38 to 0.36, and so on. So this way, kind of by iterating through the Kafka versions, you can downgrade back to Kafka 3.4 on Streamsy 0.36, where I, for example, started with the last demo with the upgrade. Uh, another thing you might be quite interested in is how does the upgrade work for the other components which Streams supports? Because in the demos, I was showing the brokers, the Kafka clusters. So what about Connect or Mirror Maker? And that basically works in the same way as for the, uh, for the Kafka brokers. Uh, obviously, Connect and Mirror Maker, they have less state because they don't store the state directly. They store it in uh, the Kafka brokers. But the whole idea of upgrades and downgrades is the same. And uh, it also has this spec version field uh, in the custom resource, which you can use to uh, change the version. And what's important when you are upgrading or downgrading Kafka Connect, you should always make sure that the container image you are using with the custom plugins you are using in Connect is always using the right version of Strimzy and the right version of Kafka as its base image. Now for the Strimzy bridge, the upgrades and downgrades are much easier because the, the Strimzy operator basically used just one version of the bridge. It's independent on the Kafka version. So the bridge is upgraded and downgraded uh, automatically when you upgrade or downgrade uh, Kafka. And then finally, I wanted to touch on the Kafka clients. Uh, uh, Streamsy will, of course, not upgrade your Kafka clients for you, but there are some things which you should keep in mind. And the first one is that you actually don't need to upgrade the clients at exactly the same time as you update the brokers. And you don't necessarily need to use the, the clients with the same Kafka version of the Kafka client libraries as you use in the brokers. Kafka does a very good job on maintaining the consumer and producer API compatibility. And unless you are using some super old uh, Kafka clients, they should work without any problems. That said, all the things I was talking about when talking about Streamsy, the bugs, the asking for help, the CVs and so on, they all apply to the Kafka clients as well. So my advice would be that upgrading the Kafka version for the brokers is always a good point to check the clients and try to upgrade them as well. Okay, we are getting uh, towards the end. So just a list of some things which uh, I would love if you can take away from this talk. So uh, first of all, if you can always try to upgrade often and stay up to date, it's much easier than you think if you really start doing it regularly. Another point is that you should always read the release notes and docs and check the limitations especially if you are jumping multiple Kafka or Streamsy versions. Uh, 
you should not be afraid of Kafka upgrades. Uh, I think a lot of people are really afraid of them and they stick with uh, super old Kafka versions and they don't want to upgrade Kafka. But in reality, I very rarely heard about any issues with, uh, with upgrading Kafka and the compatibility of the consumer and producer APIs is really great. So great job, Apache Kafka project. Uh, uh, you really shouldn't be afraid of this. Uh, I also mentioned the craft metadata version not being possible to downgrade. So be aware of that when upgrading or downgrading. And then finally, uh, in Strimzy, we try to test all the different configurations and in all the different environments, but there are hundreds of Kubernetes distributions, uh, many Strimzy configuration options, Kafka configuration options. We have no chance to test everything. So it's really important that you have some test environment which kind of follows your infrastructure, your configurations. And it's important to test the upgrade there first and not go directly into production. And even better, you can help us to test the release candidates of the new Strimzy releases. And you can test them with your configurations in your environments and uh, help us uh, catch and fix uh, any bugs that might be there early, ideally before the release. And that's it. I hope the talk was useful for you. And I think we should have uh, few minutes for questions if we have some. Yes, thank you very much, Jakub. So we have got a few questions. The first one, uh, I will start with this one uh, from Iker Jimenez. Step-by-step -step version upgrade looks definitely safer, but there seems to be a lot of manual steps. When managing multiple cluster, it could be a lot of work. Any plans to automate parts of that process? So I think it depends how you define uh, a lot of steps or too many steps or how exactly it was worded there. Uh, I think it's roughly three manual steps. Uh, you install the operator, the new version of the operator. You possibly change the Kafka version, and then you possibly change the uh, interbroker protocol version or the craft metadata version. So that's uh, three things. You basically have to do manually. In between, there's just a little bit of waiting for the uh, operator to do the rolling updates and do the do the job uh, in the background. So I'm not sure if that's too many. What you can do is basically the version fields and the interbroker protocol version, the craft metadata version fields, they are basically optional. So if you are willing to take a little bit of risk in exchange for changing less things in the configuration, you can actually completely remove them from the Kafka custom resource. And then you install the new operator version, then uh, uh, all of these upgrades will automatically happen after graded. So it will not only roll the new images in while keeping the Kafka versions, but it can automatically update the Kafka version as well. And it can then, once the Kafka version is updated, it can also update automatically the interbroker protocol version. So it's just about uh, how much control you want to have versus how much trust you put into the operator. And if you don't want to do anything manually, then you can actually use the thing such as the operator hub, for example, to install the operator and enable the completely automatic upgrades of the operator. And when we release a new Strimzy, then like one day later, it will upgrade the operator and the operator might automatically upgrade your Kafka clusters and so on. So if you want, you can do that completely without you doing anything, but it always a bit depends how much risk are you willing to accept, how much kind of control you want to have over it. So you have to, to some extent, decide uh, which way is it that you prefer. Thanks, Jakub. So let's go with the, the next one. We have just one minute and then, uh, yeah, you can stick around to answer the last one. Uh, I remember there was some work happening on offering stretched cluster as per stream is documentation. Is it available or going to come in near future? Uh, I'm not sure <laughs> that really relates to the upgrade, but uh, uh, 
so it's something what's on the roadmap, but I don't think we have any exact date when it might happen. Keep in mind, the value of that is a little bit limited because Kafka is still latency sensitive. So even if you can stretch Kafka across multiple Kubernetes versions, it will still need the Kubernetes cluster to be very close to each other. And uh, you would, for example, like there are some users who run Kubernetes cluster pay per availability zone in AWS. So within the same region, it might have some value, but you should not expect that to work well if you would have one Kubernetes cluster in this, in North America, one in uh, Asia, one in Europe, and kind of link them together, that would not work well because of the latency. So it might come, there's no exact war going on or any date or anything. Let's go with the last one. Uh, it will be, I guess, fast to, to answer. Can we run multiple versions of the operator on the same Kubernetes cluster? And can the operator be scoped to specific namespaces? So that doesn't have an easy answer, to be honest. Uh, you can do it, but Kubernetes itself doesn't, it, it isn't really multi-tenant platform. It has the namespaces to provide some kind of isolation, but they do not work as a real isolated tenants. So uh, uh, that means that the custom resources or the cluster roles and the cluster role bindings, they are shared for all Streamsy operators you would be running in your cluster. And uh, you can kind of play around to configure multiple operators to run in the same cluster, and you should use the latest CRDs, but it's not completely trivial. Uh, and there's a bit of risk because if you do that and someone decides to delete one of the Streams installations and with that deletes the CRDs, then that will basically wipe out all your Kafka clusters, even managed by the other operators, because the CRDs will be deleted. So it's a bit risky, but yeah, at the same time, running a different Kubernetes cluster for each Streamsy installation can be also quite expensive. So uh, yeah, uh, sometimes it's a trade-off, which uh, yeah, it's worth doing. Sometimes it's not. There's not much Streamsy can do about it. Streamsy itself can run in the namespace mode where it watches just one namespace, but it cannot do anything about the Kubernetes support for CRDs or cluster roles, which simply is per cluster and not per namespace. So, so there's not much more we can do compared to what we have today. Okay, thank you very much, Jakub. It was a great session. So, to, to everyone, we have a few minutes coffee break, less than 10 minutes. We'll see at uh, 3.50 uh, European time, of course. And uh, yeah, thank you again, Jakub. Thanks.